Hello, Wonder Hussy here, and welcome to part two of my spending the night at an extremely remote, abandoned mine camp video. If you watched part one, well, you remember how I drove all the way up this bumpy, rough, rocky road into this extraordinarily desolate canyon to visit a cabin, an old mine cabin. But along the way, I encountered a bunch of really interesting old mining wreckage and detritus. And then I decided to make myself a cup of Jack Daniels laced cocoa. By the way, it just occurred to me, you might have noticed I have this weird sticker on my cup and well, I had to put stars on it because she was nude. That's actually my friend's mom. My friend's mom lived at a nudist colony in uh, Malibu, I think, back in the 60s. And supposedly one day, Johnny Weissmuller, the guy who played Tarzan, and Charles Atlas, the famous bodybuilder, came to the nudist colony and took a picture with her. Now, I don't know if that's really Johnny Weissmuller or Charles Atlas, but I do know that that's my friend's mom and he gave me this sticker, so now you know. Anyway, enough of that. Let's check out this abandoned mine site. Okay, so we've got a workshop. I'm assuming that's the cabin. And then we've got a big old work building. Okay, well, I guess let's start out in the workshop since it's right over here. I'm guessing this is where they worked on all the mine equipment, the mining trucks. I mean, they had to have some pretty beefy trucks to make it up and down that road. Wow, look at this. There's so much stuff left in here. This is amazing. I mean, look, there's a can of liquid wrench, another Ham's beer can. <laughs> if you watched part one of this video, you might remember I went through the trash pile and they had a ton of Ham's beer cans. Uh, really cool old beer bottles. I mean, that looks like a classic old beer bottle that I've seen before, but that, I don't recognize the shape of this little beer bottle. Anybody ever uh, drink a beer out of a bottle shaped like this? It's very cute. A bottle of champagne, ooh. Tots, the finest brand. <laughs> Whoever brought that up here, call me. If you're into off-roading to rugged remote places like this and bringing a bottle of champagne with you, yes, you can call me. Uh, anyway, that looks like it was a syrup, maple syrup bottle, a little old coffee cup. But then down here, yeah, look at all these tools and there's an outlet. This place was wired for electricity, just like the other buildings we explored in part one. This was a pretty fancy mine camp. You know, based on the linoleum pattern in the uh, trailer and the house in the first part of this video, I dated this mine site to like the 1960s and maybe even 1970s. So there might still be people alive today who actually lived and worked up here. And if you're one of them and you're watching this video, comment below. We'd love to hear your stories. All kinds of old implements, bits and pieces of forgotten lives. Nothing too exciting. Okay, that means it's time to go check out what's behind door number two. And that is this building here, which I presume to be some kind of work shop. As we're walking along, we're passing even more old rusty bits of machinery. Oh, golly, what do you suppose this thing was? I mean, it's got handles on it and a lever on top. It almost looks like a lawnmower, but I have a feeling it wasn't a lawnmower because there ain't no grass for about 500 miles in any direction. See, that's why I kind of thought it was a lawnmower. It has blades in the front. Like, oh God, maybe it was a lawnmower. What does it say? There's a label. <gasps> Get out of town! Ideal Power Lawnmower Company, Lansing, Michigan. We'll all be a monkey's uncle. Forget what I said about there not being grass for 500 miles. Golly, maybe there was a golf course here back in the day. Oh gosh, look here, there's footprints in the dirt. Someone's been here fairly recently. Uh-oh, oh, hopefully nobody rolls up on me tonight. If they do, it's, well, maybe it'll be those explorers, the champagne drinking explorers, and I'll make some new friends. Anyway, let's go check out this low slung, long building oh goodness look at it. it's like uh, is that a chimney i guess it is there's a chimney on this end let's look on the inside it must be a oh it was it wasn't a workshop it was an actual dwelling unit i mean there's a kitchen in here and then let me just turn back around there is there was a fireplace look at that fireplace holy cannoli that's a mighty fireplace and well like i said it's gonna be real cold up here tonight it's february 2nd uh imagine how cold it was in january and december you would need a fireplace like that there's a really nice whirlpool refrigerator with a freezer let's see if there's anything in it never know oh dang it's stuck closed what secrets do you keep mystery refrigerator i want to know what's in there watch i'm probably gonna knock it over it's gonna follow me and i'm gonna get trapped and well i'm way out here with no cell signal i won't be able to get to my satellite phone better leave the fridge alone besides there's a lot more interesting stuff in here anyway look they even left their little coffee pot just sitting on the stove 
like they just up and left yesterday. You know, there was a nice four burner gas range, probably had a griddle on this side, yep. Look at this cool bowl. It's like melamine, beautiful turquoise color bowl. Put it up on the counter where it belongs. Let's see what's in here. Hantavirus. Mm, slightly less hantavirus. I don't wanna get hantavirus, better close that up. And then there's some shelves here with some old supplies laid in. Looks like they had some power bus coffee. Is that what that says? I can't read it. Fowapus. Oh dear. Golly, sometimes when I'm editing the video, it's like very apparent to me what it says. And so when I'm watching myself go, Fowapus. I laugh, but I seriously can't read what that says right now. I mean, it looks like Fowapus to me, but let's see. Oh, there's a little cabinet here. I wonder if there's anything in the cabinet. Oh, just more hantavirus. Wah, wah. Okay, but there's still another room. Okay, so we're coming into a big room with a very creepy old bed. And then to the left, a very creepy old toilet and water heater. So they had Hot water, what does this say? General captain. Well, are you a general or a captain? How does that work? Anyway, uh, onward. Oh, we got a sign up in here too, warning about hantavirus. They don't want you to get hantavirus, but we're just gonna be careful about where we breathe and we're not gonna stir up any dust. Look at this creepy old miner's bed. Oh my goodness. Some guy slept right there on this crusty old mattress and no telling what he dreamed about. Way up here all alone. Oh, I know what he probably, I bet he was thinking about, thinking about women and glasses of beer. Like that James Taylor song. There is a young miner, he lives on the range. His shovel and his pickaxe are his only companion. He works in the mine shaft and he sleeps in the canyon. <laughs> Remember that? Good night, you moonlight ladies. And rock a sweet Sarah Jane. Okay, I know that's not how it goes, but that may or may not be the way my parents sung it to me. Uh, anyway, sorry about that. Uh, let's see, what else? Another creepy old metal bed frame with a real crusty mattress on it. Oh man, look at the old toilet in here. I love that beautiful turquoise toilet seat. Oh my goodness, if I wasn't such an ethical explorer, I'd take that home with me. Actually, no, I wouldn't, that's pretty gross. But you know, there's light sockets throughout, so the whole place was wired, plumbed, and had hot water, so really not that rustic. And speaking of the hot water, look, here's the shower. And this shower, I know it's kind of dark, let me turn my flash on. This is pretty creepy. I mean, let me back up just to show you what we're dealing with here. Okay, the whole building has a pretty low ceiling. Well, then this bathroom is built on the side, so the ceiling slopes, so it's a really a tight squeeze. I mean, for reference, I'm almost bonking into the top of it, and I'm 5'3". Imagine these guys. <laughs> and then the shower, yeah, the shower's got this sloped ceiling, and it's I mean, it does, it goes down a little tiny step. Uh-oh, old newspapers. Oh, wow, this could give us a real clue. They're probably covered in hantavirus, unfortunately. Let me just pull some out and I'll take them over to where it's lighter to look at. Ugh, don't breathe. Okay, back outside in fresh air. Let's see if there's a date on any of these papers. Visit California's beautiful wine country. What paper could this have been? Oh, here, look, the Los Angeles Herald Examiner from, where's the date? Oh, these are the classified, so there's no date. All right, hold on, we'll find it, we got more pages. I mean, it looks like it was in the 60s or 70s by the outfits. The Manzanita Room, Steak and Lobster Dinner, Deluxe Cocktails. Well, that sounds good to me. Oh, Swedish Smorgasbord, remember that? Hoover Day, you could've got a Hoover vacuum cleaner for 26.88, what a deal. Antelope Valley Press, so maybe that was just the LA classified ad insert. So 1972, Antelope Valley, I've been out there. It's like kind of like the high desert outside LA. Okay, well, I'm not gonna spend any more time looking at this old newspaper because I know that it just bores many of you to tears. But I am gonna go put these papers back in the, shower where I found them. Actually, that seems silly. I'm gonna put these papers up here in the kitchen. That way, if somebody else comes up here and is into old newspapers, then they can enjoy them. In fact, I'll put them over here away from the window so they don't blow away. Put this little jar on top of them to hold them. Ugh. Okay, well, apparently this wasn't a work building. There was at least two guys sleeping in here and a pretty big kitchen. I mean, maybe they had their communal meals in here, you know? Picture a big old table here with hearty minor food. I would guess they probably had a lot of beans, bacon beans, you know, canned goods, things that they could drive the 150 miles to Vegas or Pahrump and buy in bulk and bring back up here. I'm guessing they didn't eat a lot of fresh kale, stuff like that. I'm guessing it was a lot of, <sighs> a 
well, as I like to say, beans and bullshit. Okay, let me take a cocoa break. A gal needs a little nip after seeing a newspaper like that. That was wild. Okay, so we've explored the workshop. We've explored what I thought was the work shed. Now there's only one more thing to check out, and that is the cabin. Let me just case the perimeter. Pretty rough looking, but solidly constructed and pretty well buttoned up little cabin. I like the look of it. Oh gosh, it's big. Look, it goes back. There's another room. There's a really nice fire pit here. Golly, it's times like these that I kind of do wish I was traveling with a friend, you know? I like being alone by myself a lot. Oh, I just realized my jacket is unspeakably filthy with hand virus, probably. Anyway, I do like traveling by myself a lot, but you know, it sure would be nice to sit around that campfire and drink a bottle of champagne with somebody. Oh, I guess I'm getting lonely in my old age. Anyway, let's go inside this cabin. Uh, well, nice little door handle. Nice little step, too. Front stoop. Somebody's taking care of this place. I mean, look, there's a coiled up old hose and some odds and ends, some old hot shot. Oh, it's a battery. And a real old frying pan. Golly, look how old that frying pan is. I'm guessing these are artifacts that people found laying around up here and they put them here for everyone to enjoy. That's cool. Like, look at this cute little, it's part of a teacup and it was pink on the inside. <laughs> uh, I'll refrain from comment uh, about what else those miners liked that was pink on the inside. Okay, enough beating around the bush. Let's open the latch and see how nice this cabin is inside. Oh God, it's like stuck shut. Golly, no matter what I do, this dang door won't open. The little latch here is just like frozen shut. Oh, I could go get that liquid wrench out of the garage. I doubt it still works. But there is another, uh, there's that other uh, side of the building. Maybe we can get in that way. Because I remembered seeing another door. Yeah, look, there's another door. Maybe this will be open. Let's see. Oh no, it's got a keyhole. Could be locked. Ah, bingo! Ugh. I mean, this was obviously the bathroom, but uh, the rest of the cabin is on this side, and it looks like, ah, it looks like we can probably get in. There was a door, obviously, leading from the house into the bathroom. The door, I don't think works anymore, but fortunately for us, the panel in the middle of the door has fallen away, so we can just get into it this way. Oh my god, I'm gonna be so unspeakably filthy by the time I'm done exploring this place. Ugh. Oh my gosh, but it's totally worth it. This is such a cute, cozy little cabin. Okay, it's real dark and it's not getting any lighter because the sun's going down, so I'm just gonna go about this as quickly as I can. I'll turn the flash on, even though I feel like that kind of messes up the ambiance. It'll help us see stuff. Okay, so basically, there's the door we weren't able to get in, and I don't know... It's not locked or anything. That hinge is just stuck. Well, I'll just leave it the way I found it. Anyway, uh, let's just act like we came in through this door. So I'm gonna turn around. It's a one room cabin. There's a big old 55 gallon drum, wood burning stove over there. You could have a nice fire. It's like a solid chimney. The windows are very securely covered in plexiglass and latched shut. So that's one reason why this cabin is relatively tidy. Uh, what does this say? Woodpecker patch. What does that mean? Oh, maybe they're, a woodpecker pecked a hole in the side of the house and they patched it. How cute. Going on uh, along uh, clockwise, there's a, a pot, a cooking pot, some water laid in, some bleach in a vodka bottle, yikers. And then there's a library. Look at that, the exorcist, Peyton Place, mommy dearest. Count five and die. How allied resistance leaders were deliberately sacrificed to Gestapo torture. Yikes, that's good reading for those lonely nights up here in the old mine cabin. And what do you suppose this was? I mean, now that I'm up here, I can see the, the water, the bleach in the vodka bottle, and the water from spring. Oh, so there's a spring up here. And then look below it, there's an old shirt. It's not that old, it's Van Hoysen brand, but I don't know, the way it's hanging up here makes it look real old. And speaking of old, look at those chairs. I mean, speaking of old, look at this friggin', this is a linoleum carpet we're walking on, by the way and it's pretty well preserved. You can see how it's got that beautiful floral pattern. Well, apparently that's something they used to do back in the day at these old remote mine camps. I guess it was too cumbersome to have an actual carpet or too expensive. So they would get these linoleum carpets, <laughs> carpets, you know, they're not very cozy to get it and walk around barefoot on the middle of the night when it's cold, but you know, that makes it look like you have a rug. You know what I mean? Gives it that feminine touch. Okay, anyway, uh, we were going clockwise from the bookshelf Okay, there's the door we came in from the bathroom. 
And then we have a cabinet that's probably got some supplies in it. Oh my goodness, look at this. Holy cow. These are big horn sheep antlers. I'm pretty sure it's illegal to possess these. But apparently somebody found them in the hills around here and I believe it. I mean, there's probably nothing but mountain lions and bighorn sheep. Look at this. There's three of them and they're they're heavy. It's funny because I always said I wanted a bighorn set of bighorn antlers. You know, I know it's illegal to possess them, but you know, a gal can dream. But I never realized they would be this heavy. I mean, they're thick. Like you can see how thick the... Uh, Oh my gosh, I don't know what that material is. It's like the same stuff as your fingernails. But it's very thick and very solid and very heavy. Oh, put that back there. That is cool. Oh, I just noticed there's a little, a trail register here and there was somebody just here yesterday, believe it or not. this It feels like no one's been up here in like a million years, but apparently someone was just here yesterday. Oh, here's a little set of tools for cabin repairs. How nice. Motor oil, you know, screwdrivers, pliers, nails, stuff like that. Oh, a big old Mylar space blanket if you really needed it. Old thing, a Jiffy Pop. It's like an old tea kettle. A few things down here. Oh, look, here's an old Olympic beer can. That's cool. Somebody up here didn't like hams. An empty paper towel holder, a, an old pair of shoes, and that's about it. But that's quite a bit, if you ask me. This cabin uh, was actually way more interesting than I thought it was going to be, and we haven't even looked in these cabinets yet. Yeah, I'll start with this one up here. It's got a mirror on it, and it's got a Dust Devils Motorcycle Club sticker. I guess somebody from the Dust Devils was here. Oh, okay, so this is like uh, first aid supplies, hydrogen peroxide, iodine, toothpicks. I mean, I guess it's just basically odds and ends in here. There frankly looks like there's some junk. Oh, a little bag of coffee if you need coffee. Some really cool koozies. Look at this old Olympia beer koozie. It's, it's like almost cracking. It's so dried out and old. What does this say? Doo-doo occurs. Oh, my God. I guess that's supposed to be the polite way of saying shit happens. Close that up. Okay, and then there's also a cabinet down here. Let's see what's in here. Well, top doesn't seem to want to open. Let's see what's down below. Oh, look, there are some supplies laid in. Uh, I was going to guess beer nuts, but it's empty. Candles. Oh, look. Well, it's empty, too. There were candles in there. Well, there's a puzzle and some twist tie baggies. And really, that's about it. What's in here? Oh, Q-tips. That could be useful for an emergency. Well, as it so happens, I do have a few things with me that I'll leave in this cabin uh, before I go. But first, let me look in this notebook and see who else has been here. Oh, there's a flashlight, too. That could be a real lifesaver. Let me make sure it doesn't say the name of this cabin. Oh, it does say the name of this cabin. Uh, the very first entry in this book is from 2009, but that's not the name of the cabin that I, th I thought it was called something totally different. So apparently the secret is very well kept up here. So yeah, not a very often visited cabin if the first entry in this whole book is from 2009. That means it took 14 years to get halfway through this book. I mean, you can see people come through the years. There's somebody that was here just before Christmas 2011. Here's a couple people. Nancy Barber and Cheryl Gregory from Las Vegas. Cool place, dude, in 2016. Oh my golly. So people have been coming here since 2020. During the pandemic, too, oh my goodness. Golly, just reading through all the entries in this book, it looks like some people don't even drive all the way up here. They hike up part of the way, because the road really was rough. But then there are, there's a lot of Jeepers and Oh, here's a guy. I found this location by accident in a Toyota pickup. Wow, a Toyota pickup. And then it says, used firewood due to staying longer than anticipated, but left some whiskey. I wonder if that's the whiskey they left. There's a bottle of Canadian Crest. Fine plastic jug of whiskey here on the table. Hey, man, I'm not too good to drink it. I mean, I brought my own Jack Daniels, so I'm okay. But I have taken a nip from whiskey bottles I found in these cabins before, so... I think it's cool that guy left that. Oh, look at this guy. Wow, found this place by accident. Prospector Bob. Oh, here's one. Made it all the way up to the cabin yesterday on a stock Toyota Tacoma in 2018. Right on. Slightly hair-raising drive at times and would never have attempted without my trusty adventure companion and good friend from college along for the ride. Boy, it's like I said, it's always good to have a buddy with you because you never know when you're going to have mechanical problems. And, you know, yeah, somebody was just here yesterday, which is pretty interesting to me, but... Uh, I don't know when the next people will come up here, and so if I had a mechanical problem, whoo, it might be a while before somebody found me. Okay, I went ahead and signed the trail register. I just said, fantastic, desolate spot, adventuring solo female in Toyota 4Runner. Hope I make it out alive. Really enjoyed checking this place out. And then I signed my name, which, to be honest, I was kind of hesitant to do because I've been in other cabins and read in the log where people are like, ah, I hope there's no wonder hussies up here. Ah. 
Anyway, if somebody has something nasty to say about me, let them say it. I'll probably never come back up here again and read it. Okay, wow. It is getting dark outside. And that means it's getting even darker in this cabin. So I think I'm going to say goodbye to the cabin for now. But before I leave, like I said, I did bring some items to leave behind. I got a baggie of first aid supplies that one of my viewers sent. It's got band-aids, Q-tips, Tylenol, you know, cold presses, antacids, all kinds of stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and put that in this... Uh, Remember how I said there was kind of like a medicine chest? I'll put that right here. So if anybody does need first aid supplies, well, now they've got a fighting chance. Although there's just so much garbage in here to begin with, it's, it's kind of depressing. Now oh, maybe, uh, maybe I'll tidy this cabinet up in the morning. But before I do that, there's uh, one other thing. I brought an American flag. I didn't notice an American flag anywhere in this cabin. So I'm gonna go ahead and hang this one up somewhere. There, I hope that's not seen as too aggressively patriotic, but I hung up an American flag there under the bookshelf on kind of a bare patch of wall because I didn't want to cover up anything interesting. Anyway, that being said, it is getting real dark in this cabin. So I'm just going to go ahead and close her back up the way I found her and go back outside and sort of, I guess, make dinner and make camp. Okay, I put the panel back on that little bathroom door that I snuck through and I'm going to close the door to the bathroom real tight behind me. It doesn't blow open. Okay, well, I would say I left that cabin better than I found it. <laughs> I don't know, I always feel like there's somebody who's still going to criticize me for even going in there in the first place. I'm too sensitive to be a YouTuber. I take all this stuff to heart. Like when I read these comments from people like, no wonder I see in this cabin. You know, you got to have a thick skin if you're going to be a public figure and I need to accept that. Oh, wow, look. Look at the beautiful moon. Oh my God, it's almost full. A couple more days till a full moon. Right above my lonely little campsite. Golly, I left my tailgate wide open while I was exploring all those buildings. No telling how many creepy crawly critters are gonna be cuddled up with me tonight in bed. Whew, it is already getting really cold. Thank goodness I have a lot of blankets. I've got one, two, three, four, Four, plus I have like four and if you double some of them up like six plus one of them is wool so I think I'll be just fine but if you want to find out if I survive the night well tune in next time because guess what I'm gonna do when I wake up in the morning I have intel that there may be another cabin and another structure of some sort even farther up the canyon and unfortunately you can't drive to those I'm gonna have to go the old-fashioned way on foot so if you want to see what lies beyond, <laughs> stay tuned.